topic this morning is holiness in this present world. Holiness in this present world. Some believe when we get to heaven, we can be holy. But when we but in this world, we cannot be holy. If you are not holy in this world, you will never enter there. Wherever you want to work, wherever you want to work, they need you to be qualified. They will check your qualifications. Before you are employed. It's not that after you have been employed, you then start getting qualified. No, there's nothing like that. Holiness is something many pastors don't like to talk about. Some say it, but they don't tell us how to become. But this morning we shall quickly look at holiness in its entirety. A human body needs health. And this is what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. Before you can perform very well, you need health, you need strength. And so now, but in your jumabi, you pay only a promotion in your holding. Holiness is the health. Of the spiritual body. A, a sick Christian is not an enjoyable Christian life. Holiness is compulsory. Not if possible. Not if necessary. It is compulsory. What is holiness? What is holiness? Number one, holiness is living the life of God in this world. Living the life of God in this world. Number two, Holiness is having the mind of Christ. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Having the mind of Christ. Number three. Holiness is a state of omissedness. A state where there is no mixture at all. When you go to the Obasi mine, or taqua mine, you see that the gold will come from the ground with mixed things. Then they will purify it. Separate the real gold from the other things. So when you separate the real gold from the other things, then you can say, here is gold. When, you are, when your life is separated from other things and it's not in the pure state that is what we call holiness. Number four, holiness is having the supreme love for God. Supreme love for the work of God and supreme love for the people of God. A holiness man will love a sister without an ulterior motive. A holiness woman will love a brother without an ulterior motive. Because the pure love is there. Number four, number five. Holiness is dedication to God and his glory. 
That means you have totally surrendered yourself. Your life is to glorify him. Your life is to honor him. Your life is to magnify him. And lastly, it is called the sanctified life. That word sanctification came from the Latin word sanctofere. Sanctofere means the act of making holy. So when we say sanctified life, it is what we mean when the Adamic nature is taken away from you. Adam We also call it transplantation of the heart. As, as God said, a new heart will I also give you. We also call it circumcision of the heart. That's why God commanded the children said to circumcise their hearts. Why must we be holy? There are three reasons why we must be holy. Number one, the problems we have demands holiness. The problems we have demand holiness. Number two, God wants holy living. God wants holy living. And number three, the promises of God demands holiness. The promises of God demand holiness. Let's take the first one. The problems we have commands us to be holy. What are the problems you have in the church? Because when we are talking about holiness, we are not talking to sinners. We are talking to believers. We are talking to those who have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We are talking to those who have been born again. Sinners cannot be sanctified. Sinners are to be saved. It is after you have been saved, you now, you now take the next step and be sanctified. Some say you see, we get sanctified by and by. We shall go to that one later on. What are the problems we have among Christians? Number one, lack of unity. Lack of unity. Lack of love. Lack of cooperation. Now, going to the government of Ghana. The minister of education is different for the minister of health. The minister of health is different for the minister of agriculture. But they are all ministers under the government of the present day government. And they all work together to see that their government perform. We are not the same as we are. Just like our fingers are not the same. I have my talent, you have your talent. I have my nature, you have your nature. There are some things I can do very well that you can do better than me. And there are some things I cannot do that you can do. That's how we are in the church. God expect we should be one. Jesus Christ said that they all may be one. That means you can be an evangelist. I am a teacher and trainer. I am not an evangelist. You can be an evangelist. Another person can be a pastor. Another person can be an apostle. Another one can be a prophet. 
And we are all serving to the glory of the Lord. There should be unity in the church. Because it is the work of our Father. It is not an individual work. Alas, it's not so in the church. Everybody is working for himself. Everybody is thinking of himself. Every pastor wants his own church, his own church. And they, when you hear them talking, they say, My church. My church. It is the church of the living God. It is no man's church. You are a, you are a, you are a shepherd. Oh, you join her for under the great great shepherd. If we use another language, we say you are under shepherd. Jesus is the real shepherd of the church. The controller, general, and director of his church. We are laborers in his vineyard. Therefore, the church does not belong to us. And let us all understand that all of us cannot be head of one church. Only one head. And the others will work under him or her. And so there must be unity in the church. For unity to come, sanctification must come. Remember the disciples of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was telling them that he was going to Jerusalem. He will be arrested. He will be crucified. Then the disciples look went to one another started asking one another who shall be the greatest among us Jesus is going after he has gone so who shall be the greatest among us they started arguing among themselves no wonder Jesus had to pray for them and say father sanctify them yes they have been born again they have been washed in the blood but they needed to be united which can only be done by sanctification when the day of, uh, of Pentecost was fully come they were all together in one place with one accord that was unity and that is unity by the time Peter rose up, by the time Peter rose up, and said, We need to replace Judas Iscariot. You see, there was no argument among them. There was nobody speaking against Peter. They, were all, they didn't even ask him who made you our head. Because they had not done any official ordination for Peter. They had not come together to vote and say who will be our leaders. Let's vote and then vote Peter to be the leader. No. Man, two and buy Peter. So my man, Peter, Debbie. Peter just felt we need to replace Judas Iscariot. And when I said Peter, sorry, can't say just say do a bit of Judas. And he rose up. No, sorry, and he talks no, and they all agree with no, him him. and they chose two people no, then they voted between the two people who will be no, and they, they all agree the one that had the highest vote let him be no, so our number one problem it's, is lack of unity it's our number one problem is lack of unity lack of cooperation lack of love Number two problem is carnality. Fleshly behavior. After you have been born again, you are still a human being. As a husband, you are a human being. As a wife, you are a human being. As a daughter or son, you are a human being. As a father in the house, you are a human being. As a mother in the house, you are a human being. Wherever you are working, you are a human being. The tendency is there. 
Hey, you think of yourself. Think of your things. Think of getting this, getting that. When you are thinking of physical things, and physical things are taking the position of spiritual things in your life. We call that one carnality. That means physical things are controlling you. That is why you need to be sanctified. You need to be made holy. Number three reason that is the problems we have. Number three is wrong motives for service. Wrong motives for service. Some years ago, when I was in a church in Kumasi here. The church was still young at that time. A sister from DJMC was in the choir. Suddenly we saw that she was no more coming to church. We sent some people to go and check her up. And when they check her up, Saying, I won't come again. What's the problem? Say, all oh, my singing. No brother saw vision about me. I said, God says the Lord to marry me. Say, my so all the singing she was doing was for a brother to identify her and say, God says the Lord. God wants me to marry this sister. When you are singing in the choir so that some brothers will see you and want to marry you, wrong motive. Whatever you are doing in the church for the purpose of being known or being recognized or for the purpose of getting something for personal gain or use that is wrong motive you need sanctification now the problems we have local FM station story tellers that is you carry the story from here to here carry the story from here to here you are the local FM station around anybody who wants to know what is going around should, should tune you on when you are like that you might have been born again you need to be sanctified now number five seeking self glory or self promotion that is clear seeking your own glory or how you will rise up and be promoted and exalted you need sanctification number six when you are rude when you are rude when you are not easily controlled when you are self justifying if somebody tells you where are you brother don't you know you shouldn't do this and you always have excuse for everything you are doing you don't easily accept correction you don't easily accept correction you need sanctification where there is stubbornness and disobedience these are some of the problems we have why we must be sanctified number two reason why we must be sanctified God wants holy living the Bible says, I see that has called you is holy. Be ye holy. That means it's compulsory to be holy if you want to go near God. Why? Why? A, a kid resembles the mother goat. A calf resembles the mother cow. 
Samson ayo o join baso so ese ayo o join. A chicken resemble the mother hen. Samson ako ko baso so ese ako ko baso. So if we are truly children of the living God, that is ye nyako poti asifone mampa. We must resemble our Father. Eju ase ye se ye jano. And our Father is holy. Na ye jano ye kron kron. He is he that has called us. Ono ne di awa freyen. Therefore, it's compulsory for us to be holy. Eni che ye shema ye se ye be ye kron kron. And number three. The promises of God demands holiness. The Bible says, having these promises, these promises, for them to be carried out in our lives, demands holiness. Holiness is compulsory. Holiness is mandatory. But why is it that we don't easily get holiness? There are enemies of holiness. Everything in life has enemies. Especially everything good in life has enemies. Now, number one enemy unprofitable conversations when you are praying for holiness and you are the type who talk anyhow even if you get it you will lose it unprofitable conversation is an enemy of holiness number two giving allowance to bitterness when you lack tender heartedness or you are harsh in your spirit these are enemies of holiness and even if you get holiness, you will lose it. Bitterness cannot be in the heart of a holy man of God. Harshness. You know some are harsh when they talk. They are very harsh. I say, brother, why are you fighting me? Hey, I'm not fighting. That's my nature. That, my na that nature needs to be subdued. That nature needs to be broken. That nature needs to be buried. And Jesus needs to be brought up in your life. What other enemies do we have? When you are harsh, when you are loud, when you are rough in your speaking. Number four, evil speaking and tail bearing. Number five, pride. Pride and spirit of revenge. A proud Christian is an abomination to God. A proud Christian is an abomination to God. That means it's absurd. It's unthinkable to say there is a Christian and is proud. It it doesn't work together. You no, know, it's only in Christianity we have absurd things. But in the real life, no absurdity. Hey, for example, there is no truthful liar. Anything like that. A truthful liar. Or a honest thief. Is there anything like that? Do we have a blackish white? Oh, that color is blackish white. So I know It's blackish white. That means white and black. You are either white or you are black. It's only in Christianity we have absurdities. Which in the life of the word of God is not acceptable. Another enemy of holiness is selfish personal ambition. Selfish personal ambition. One song says, I'm no more, I'm I no longer live, but Christ liveth in me. When you are sanctified, you are crucified with Christ. I can say, nevertheless, I live. But now I now live. 
I, I live in the glory of the Son of God. What other uh, enemy do we have? Impatience. Impatience. If you are an extrovert, pray. Bompai. Pray Bompai. that patience will have perfect control in your life. Impatience can cause you to lose your relationship with God. Impatience can make you to lose what you have got. Learn to be patient. Learn to be patient with people. Learn to be patient with things. Because as long as you are in the will of God, all things work together for good for them that love God. Pastors, please. Learn to be patient with people. People can drive you out of the kingdom if you don't take care. Do you know Moses lost Canaan land because of people. The people were on his nerves. And when God told him, go and speak to the rock. He got to the rock. He first of all talked to the people. These stiff naked people. Shall I bring out water from the rock for you? He was so tense. By the time he got to the rock, instead of speaking to the rock, he hit the rock two times. Bogam. Bogam. The water started coming out. But do you know what? Somebody will say, but why did water come out if Moses was wrong? God will still feed his people with water. That is why you can see some backsliders will preach and people will be born again. Some pastors who have gone into immorality will preach and some people will be born again. Again, they will preach and some people will get healed. Don't say, if, if God doesn't like me, if God is not more with me, why are people getting born again? What? Oh, don't, don't, don't think that you are anything. If you like, God can use you like a sanding tin or a milk tin. When we buy the tin, tin of milk, we pierce it one, two. We pour it. When we finish pouring the milk, what do we do with the container? Do we keep it inside our wardrobe? Inside a cupboard? What do we do with it? We throw it away. If you don't learn to be patient, you are the container containing milk. God will use the milk inside you. And after that, throw you away. No, we are to watch you, baby. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I know man you are As a you. pastor, so, yeah, so but be very careful so, so that you don't become a bookman in the transport station. Bookman will book everybody for the car oh, except no. himself. Oh, no. He won't book for himself. He will book everybody. When the, when the car is full he will call the driver. No, fresh and The car is full. His own commission is given to him. The driver drives the people away. He stays behind. No, no, the My, my good pastors. My soft for papa. Don't be good. Don't be bookmen. That we, that we book people for heaven. 
heaven. And another driver will drive them to heaven. And you, and you will stay behind. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, we must see these enemies and fight them. What are the other enemies of holiness? Prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. And lack of study of the word of God. You keep your holiness life through the word of God and through prayers. In today's Christianity, some give a lot of time to prayers. No time for Bible. Some others give a lot of time for Bible. No time for prayer. But every bird fly with two wings. And the Bible and prayer are our wings. Don't rate them above the other. Let your prayer lead you to the Bible. Let your Bible lead you to prayer. And let your prayer be full of the word of God. When you are prayerless, a prayerless Christian is not malleable in the hand of the Almighty God. When you are very prayerful, so you'll be a bomb pipe here. You are like a clay. What to say in the potter's hand. You are so soft that the potter can mold you to whatever he wants. That is those who are very prayerful. When you are knowledgeable of the word of God, it's easy for God to guide you. Some of the passages you read some years ago can be used to guide you even today. You feel your life with the word of God. What other enemies do we have? Meditating on objects of, of temptations. When you're always meditating on objects of temptations, maybe by accident, you saw a naked woman. And after you left the woman, as you are going, you are meditating on the nakedness you saw. You have lost whatever you possess. But I didn't sleep with anybody. You have lost whatever you possess. So don't meditate on objects of temptation. The Bible says, flee, run away. From all appearances of evil. That is, whenever you see shadow of evil, run away from the shadow. Don't wait to see the reality. Other enemies of holiness. Lack of a continued entire obedience and consecration. When you are sanctified, let me help you in this level. There are sanctifications of different grades and different levels. A common Christian in the church means a level of sanctification. When you are becoming a leader in the church, you have to go higher on your dedication and consecration. That's a higher level of sanctification. When you become a pastor of the church, your consecration must rise higher. Why? Because because the higher you go, the, the hotter it becomes. In geography, in geography, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. But in Christianity, the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. Why? I didn't hear. As I'm here now, if I fall down, I will rise up. Because I'm on the floor level. 
if I come to the edge here if I fall down here I may stand up but I might have some small bruises somebody is in the gallery here if he should fall down here is it the same as somebody falling down from here is it the same Somebody is on the roof. So when it should sure. fall down, so it's not the same as somebody on the gallery. And just said the original air steps. So the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. Na yes more. When a senior pastor backslides, it's is more horrible than when an ordinary Christian backslides. That is why you must be able to guard yourself that the higher you are going the more consecration the more yieldedness the more commitment the more watchfulness that is compulsory then another enemy of holiness taking our fears into our own hands. Taking our fears into our hands. Like I was looking at the message of one pastor. A lady pastor. When she was handling offering, she said, I am in control here. I am in control here. My brother, Never take over the control of the church from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit should be in control, not you. you. Let God be in control of your life. Don't take your own affairs out of the hand of the Lord. How are you going to get married? Is in the hand of God. How are you going to control your family? In the hand of God. I remember those days when I was going to from school to school preaching the gospel. One pastor came to one school to preach. I wanted him to finish before it would be my turn. He said, if you want to marry, you must get about four, five girlfriends. Then you start trying them. Trying them. Trying them. When they now remain two, then you start praying seriously. God, which one among the two? God, which one among the two? I was just looking at him. Because I saw he was upside down in his imagination. If among those two, if God's will is not among them, which one will God point to? Other pastors, when you want to marry, I get two sisters. Then you take a coin. Now coins. Sister Ya is head. No Sister Ajua is tail. They say God. As I want to toast this coin now. If a sister Ya, let it be head. If a sister Ajua, let it be tail. What or if it's none of them? Say no We side with the coin land with. And We side. If it's none of them. You see how we deceive ourselves. When God wanted to anoint a king. He said, Samuel. This time tomorrow. I'll bring the man to you. And God has already set a program in place. Saul, the son of Kish, was already wandering up and down. At the very time he was to be brought to Samuel, he was coming to Samuel like this. And Samuel said, That is the one coming. That God who brought Samuel and Saul, the son of Kish, together, can't he bring your partner to come and meet you? You say, but that one is Old Testament. Let's come to the New Testament. 
Saul of Tarsus. He met Jesus on the way to Damascus. Saul told him to go to Damascus. He was going as a blind man now. He was taken to a house. And he was praying. Go to this. There is a man called Saul of Tarsus. He is there. Is there uh-huh. and is praying, uh-huh. and he has seen a vision of you uh-huh. coming to pray for him. Uh-huh. So go and meet him. Uh-huh. Now look at it. Uh-huh. God called Ananias uh-huh. and has already given the vision of Ananias to Saul already. Uh-huh. He walks from both ends of the line to make it me. Look at the case of Colinus in chapter 10 of Act of the Apostles. He told Colinus sends messengers to Joppa. There is somebody there called Simon. Our Simon. Son named Peter. Our friend Peter. He is living in the house of one Simon the Tanner. By, by, by the sea. All the descriptions were given to him of how to get Peter. Peter was over there. God who was preparing him. Peter would not want to mix with anybody that was not a Jew. Before the messengers came. Peter was prepared. By the time they were knocking at the gates. God said Peter go and meet them. I send them to you. Go with them. Asking no questions. That is God in the New Testament. The God of the Old Testament. Is the God of the New Testament. And it is the God of today. Day. Therefore, don't take your fears away from the hand of God. There is no accident with God. Whatever God allows in your life, even though it is Satan that is doing that thing in your life, if you are a real child of God, God allowed it. Remember Jesus Christ. The Bible says, He was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It, it wasn't God that was to tempt him. But it was Satan that was to tempt him. Yet it was the spirit of the living God that led him there. If God allows anything in your life, there is a purpose for it. Give God the chance. Give God the glory. And you later praise God for it. So never take away your affairs from the hand of God into your own hand. What other problems do we have or enemies do we have? The temptation to be like others. The temptation to be like others. Be yourself in every situation. God will use you as you are. Peter was different from Paul. God used Paul to his level. God used Peter to his level. David was different from, uh, from a Joseph. David Joseph. God used Joseph to his level. God used David to his level. Don't compare yourself. We can learn from each other. But you will never be me. I will never be you. So when the temptation is coming to to be like others. Tell yourself and fearfully and wonderfully created. God intentionally created you to be you. You know nowadays, especially the women, 
they are trying to recreate themselves. They said the way God created them is not fine. They remove the air God put in their on their face here. They remove it and put mark and put a mark to draw another. That means that man who put that growing air there is a foolish man. Then they scrape it and draw their own. Then the face look like the cat face. It why when you are free or no the pants will be at us so say do you hear any of Jimmy? Some will say, eh, why did God create me to be a black person? They will go and get some chemical, rub it on their body, so that they become fair. It will be one more baby said the thing and copy me to say. I did it in a some years ago. There was an American black man. It's a no people American musician. No, I am to four. He said, I am black and proud. Okay, me, I am black and proud. If you tell me that I'm too dark, I say yes. Because I, I didn't buy from supermarket. It, it is God who made me like that. I am like that. You like me? So you take me like that. You don't like me? You leave me like that. Some will say eh, their bottom is small. They will go and make doctors to do to do some things to eat. Just few, just few weeks ago, one doctor was arrested in Brazil. Because as he was increasing the, bo the bottom of a woman, the woman died. So the doctor was arrested. Some will say the breast that God gave them is too small, they go and make it big. One was in the plane. As he was trying to take her baggage from the baggage compartment, what they did in her breast broke up and poured on the passenger that was there. And they had to rush her to the nearest hospital for her not to even die. Whatever God has made is beautiful. Whether you like me or not, I am a handsome man. If you like it, take it. If you don't like it, I am a handsome man. Sisters, how many of you are not beautiful? Let me see your hand. If you are not beautiful, let me see your hand. If you are beautiful, say yes. Brothers, if you are handsome, say yes. Whatever God has made is beautiful. See yourself the way God has made you. Don't work things out yourself. The creator, the manufacturer, is the wisest person. The creator, the manufacturer, is the wisest person. What other enemies do we have that can hinder our progress in holiness? Lean, learning, leaning on self experience leaning so, on self experience so ni pande ne hoto onu ankasa ni ni ndie ni nsu e huno so oh i did this thing before oh my you open oh i don't need to pray now to ask god again because i did it before i can do it again e hun ya se me bo mpa e bi o san se na me ye no me say ni bi o when david became king abra david be yo hene no the philistines came to fight him philistines for ne ne ba be ko you can read the story in second samuel chapter 5 obeti ya kan o di for some ahuma de to fight him o mune ne ba be ko david went to the lord in prayer david called you there ni mo pa ibo i go obisa se men ko ala i fight them men ko kunti o mo ala shall i conquer e met me adio mo so god says go e wa le se ko he went he fought he conquered o ko e o ko e no di nkunim and after that, the Philistines came again. He didn't use his experience. He went back to God. Shall I go? Shall I fight? Shall I conquer? God said, you go. For this time, fetch a compass that go around. Come from their back. And when you get to the mulberry tree, wait there. When you hear the wind, Blowing on top of the trees. 
So what is from my boy in Riasua? Then start going to the battlefield. No, I shall see a call. It means the army of the Lord is going ahead of you. Just say, "Yanko passa for Domne di Ukai." David did not rely on his experience. David, I know one too. I know I can send you some. He was always relying on the leading of the Almighty God. Yeah, be a Lord. No, too. Yanko pa kwa interest. Why must you rely on your experience? The work of God is different from the work of man. Yanko pa juma di a dance. So every nipa juma di a. Is the work of God. And he is alive. Let him guide. What are the enemies we have? Being an object of temptation to other people. Being an object of temptation to other people. Through your dressing, you can be an object of temptation. Through the way you talk. Your talking can provoke somebody to anger. You are an object of temptation. Through some other things you do, and I'm no maybe a woman can lure somebody into sin. That is an enemy of holiness. What other enemy do we have? Wanting praise. You want praise? You are set praise. Whatever you do, always give the glory to God. It is not when I and I and I. It is He. 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 Give the glory to God. You preach and you make altar call. And thousands of people come and start rejoicing. That God is touching the lives of the people. It is not you doing it. It's not you doing it. Start glorifying the name of the Lord. As you are ministering, I just read the testimony of a man of God in Nigeria just about two weeks ago. This man was rejected. But one way or the other, there was a big crusade. And the big preacher could not come. Then they felt, who are we going to push there? This rejected brother, let's put him there. So that if, if he cannot heal anybody, everybody will say he can heal. So they push him to the pulpit. When, he, when the interpreter saw him, the interpreter just put the mic down and left the place. So me to interpret for this one, when some of the members of the choir saw him, they started leaving the place. When the brother got there, he started crying. He started crying. What I am. What can I do? I have never done this before. As he was crying, one crippled man jumped up over there and started shouting, I can walk. I can walk. And the brother was still crying. As he was crying, he even raised up a chorus. Nobody sang it with him because in my language, say that when we don't want you, you are you are raising a chorus. Who will sing it with you? Ope ya ni mo biya kwa mfino san san meka san yeka san o o biya mpe wa samosi ya kuto jumwa ni befi. And as he was still crying before the Lord, a blind man started shouting over there. I can see, I can see, I can see. Oni friendi bisho tianse miuna diya miuna diya. Those members of the choir were going away, started running back. No more, much of you no more. No more, so much of you. All the other people were going away, started coming back. No more, much of you. So much of you. Some of them started running to their houses to go and bring their sick people and bring them to the place. A bit to make a coffee, coffee, money, and a moment. Yeah, but for one, I had a first as a son of the mob. Didn't see himself as anything. Only funny when it's on one session, and he didn't preach. Just crying in front of the pulpit miracles were happening. Who did it? 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 Who did it?
let's put our eyes on him don't do don't do as if you are this you are that and whatever miracle god is performing under you give the glory to god give the glory to god, the glory to god. what other enemies do we have living a luxurious life living a luxurious life one pastor bought a wrist watch one thousand dollars. What does this watch do? Is it not to tell you time? One thousand dollars. Or the thousand dollars How much would that one be in Ghana cities? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For one wrist watch. watch for one person. Watch back up, no, no. Think of what that money could do for other people. One pastor was preaching. And he said, this shoe I have. Nobody is having this type of shoe in Nigeria. And after that, what is, what is your gain? Your, your shoe is the only one in Nigeria. What is your gain? Your wrist was the best in the whole country. What is your gain? Is, your wrist was to give you time. Mine is to give me time. Your shoe is covering your leg. Mine is covering your leg. Covering your leg. Whether you bought yours from the America and I bought mine from Bruni, where we, um, it doesn't matter. You are wearing shoe and wearing shoe. So when you are living expensive life it is you you are affecting your internal being oh how you are affecting the situation of your inner man oh how please check up yourself what other thing do we have looking or meditating on difficulties you are always looking at the negatives. Oh, sure, no, my auntie, my uncle. Brothers and sisters who are melancholies, please take care. Don't major on problems. Don't major on problems. Think of reality. Think of possibilities. Because the Almighty is at work. Within no impossibility. What other enemies do we have? Yielding to discouragement. Discouragement does not respect anybody. As great as Elijah was. The greatest day of his life. The day he brought fire from heaven. The day he commanded rain to come. That very day. A woman says, I will kill you. And he was running. I said, God, let God, me die. Come. I'm not better than any of my fathers. That is discouragement. Look at David. He and his men came to the camp. Their wives and children are gone. The Bible said they all broke down and started crying. They went until there was no energy to weep again. That is discouragement. But the Bible says in First Samuel chapter 30 verse 6 the Bible says and David encouraged himself in the Lord. My brother, don't yield to discouragement. Things will go out of the way at times. But remember, Jesus is the pilot of your plane. He knows where he's going. He knows the right pressure and temperature of the plane. He knows the right height the plane must be. Trust him. Encourage yourself. He that watches over Israel neither slumber nor sleep. So you must always trust him. Now, let me quickly go to another point. How do we receive this holiness? There is sanctification, there is salvation. When you are a sinner, 
Before you can be saved, you must agree with God that we are a sinner. Because we are all born sinners. According to Psalm 51 verse 5, we are all born sinners. Whether you are born by a pastor, it doesn't really matter. We are all born sinners. And the wages of sin is death. The soul that sinned, it shall die. So every sinner is carrying death sentence. Where you know now realize you are a sinner. And you come to the foot on the cross. Now I say, God, I'm sorry. I've been living in sin. I've done this, 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 this. Forgive me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. And make me your son. As you do that, the Lord saves you then you are born again. Your sins and trespasses are thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. Now, sanctification. You realize that yes, I am born again. But my love is not 100% for Jesus Christ. My commitment is not 100% for Jesus Christ. My dedication to serve the Lord is not 100%. I still have some questionable things in my life. And because of that, you now go to the altar. You lay yourself on the altar. First, as Paul said, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present yourself a living sacrifice. That is Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Present yourself a living sacrifice not a dead sacrifice. A sinner is dead in sins and trespasses. But a Christian is living is alive. So you are not putting yourself on the altar a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service. Now when you lay yourself on the altar you are confessing your weaknesses. You are confessing your, up, your areas you are down. A sinner will confess his sins to the Lord. A Christian will confess his weaknesses and shortcomings to the Lord in sanctification. And the altar sanctifies the gift. What are the things that will help you to be sanctified? Pray without season. Pray without season. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. Beware of compromise in little, little things. Some years ago in Kumasi here. One sister came to me. Said somebody is teaching holiness. And say if you want to be holy as a married woman, you must never allow your husband to touch you. I said, my sister, that person run away from him. Because Abraham was married. He had not given birth. God was promising me he would give birth. That means God expected him to touch his wife. And yes, God told Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. That means God was saying, holiness is demanded from you, Abraham. And yet, Abraham will still touch his wife. And still give back to the children that God has promised him. So, don't compromise in things, in little, little things. At least, we tell you, this one does not matter. This one does not matter. This one does not matter. I know some pastors who 
wife doing this one. I know some pastors who are doing this one. Have you gone to the record book of God and see that pastor's name there or that pastor's wife's name there? Therefore, beware of compromise. Not only that, lay your all on the altar. Keep your all on the altar. Lay your all on the altar. Keep your all on the altar. And maintain a prayerful life. Maintain a prayerful life. Now, if I am sanctified, what, what, how do I know? Well, First Corinthians 13. Read it on your own. It talks about agape love. That type of love is agape love. From the Greek word is agapao. Which means God's giving love. A different from Philadelphia. Which is the brother, the love we have for each other or something like that. It is different, different from the conjugal love, the love between husband and wife. Agape is God's giving love. A love without reason. Say, brother, do you know you, you know why I love you? I love because of this, this, this. That is not agape. But the God's own giving love. If he loves me, I cannot say why. He loves me, I cannot say why. On Calvary Tree, they suffered for me. He loved me, I cannot say why. That is God giving love. When you love without why. When you love without a reason, that is God giving love. That is an evidence of sanctification. When there is oneness, when we are no more choosing or, or deciding, you are an Ashanti, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm from Bulga, I'm a Wala person, or I'm a Navrongo person, or I'm a. What other name do we call ourselves? Maybe I'm, an, I'm from number nine. All those things doesn't matter again when we are in Christ Jesus. When you are in, when you are really in holiness, there is oneness. We may not see the same side all the time. Because I'm looking at this pillar now. The way I'm looking at this pillar is not the way you are looking at the pillar from where you are. But it's still the same pillar we are looking at. You will see from different angles, but we are seeing the same thing. Let us learn to agree. When you are sanctified, you have Perfect love for God. Perfect love for the house of God. Perfect love for the people of God. Perfect love for the ministers of God. Perfect love for the work of God. That is evidence of sanctification. Another evidence of sanctification is right motives. Right motives. People Controlling factor in your life is the glory of the Lord. How to honor the Lord. How to magnify the Lord. How to glorify the Lord. That is the motive that is driving a sanctified man. Another evidence is calmness at heart. Calmness at heart. Whatever is happening. There is calmness down there. Why is there calmness there? Jesus, Jesus is in control. That's why we sing that chorus. With Christ in the vessel, we smile at the storm as we go sailing home. Another evidence of sanctification is the desire to do the will of God at all costs. I 
And what I will say lastly on that one is that if you really love God, you will hate sin. If you truly love God, you will hate sin. Those are evidences of sanctification. When you are a sanctified person, what are the enjoyments you have? Number one, there is joy and Ooh. inner peace. There is joy and inner peace. Ooh. You can't buy from any market. That is why you must be sanctified. That's why you must pray for sanctification. Secondly, it's easy to relate with anybody, anywhere, anywhere. You can easily reach, you can easily reach agreement with anybody. Then you know one thing? Your prayers are easily answered. Because a holiness man is an awful weapon in the hand of the Almighty God. When you are a holiness person, as you say, in the name of Jesus, every kneel already bowing around you. But if you are not a holiness person, Satan will answer you. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Satan, be bua say yesu mini mini mpo na onso kwa ne wanyi. So holiness makes your prayer answered easily. When you are a holiness person, God is happy with you. God is happy with you. You know what? Satan fears you. Satan fears you. When you are coming, you will say, he's coming again. She's coming, she's coming again. He's already packing, packing his load already. Because you are coming. Satan fears you. Not only that, when you close your eyes in death, heaven is your home. Death is not a problem for you. It's just a transport that carry you from this end to the other end. And you be able to see the glory of faith of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a precious thing to live a holiness life. You know, Enoch lived that type of life. And God took him up with him. Noah lived that type of life. And when God was destroying the whole world, God saved him and his family. Abraham lived that of that type of life. That's why in Genesis chapter 18, God said, Can I do something that I will hide from my friend Abraham? And Genesis did to you do what you need. What could you hide anything from Abraham? Because he was a holiness man. If you say no, you're crum crum. What about Joseph? His, Joseph ma his master could see it in him. His master could see it in him. You could see that God is with this boy. God is with this boy. The prison warder could see it in him. And that is why you could see that in problems, God was lifting him up, lifting him up, lifting him up, him up, him up, lifting him up, lifting him up, lifting him up until he got to the highest position in the land. When the prophet went to King Hezekiah, and said, God says the Lord, get your house in order. You will die. He just turned to God. And said, God, remember how I served you in holiness and righteousness. That was the prayer. Just remember how I served you in holiness and righteousness before he finished the prayer God told prophet Isaiah go back to my servants go back to him tell him I've given him 15 more years you see somebody that God said would die just now 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 God said change it and say 15 more years and not only that I will heal you 
Not only that, I will protect this city for my sake and for my servant David's sake. Why will you not live a holiness life? Why will you not live a holiness life? He's, he's free. He's simple. He's easy. You don't labor for it. All you do is yield to the Lord. Just surrender. To him. I entered this life some years ago. And I've never regretted that I'm serving the Lord. I've never regretted that I'm worshiping the Lord. Why will you not enter into holiness? Why will you not enter into holiness? This is your time now. This is your chance now. Let's just rise up on our feet and go to the Lord in prayer. And then open your mouth and cry to the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet and go to the Lord in prayer. And then open your mouth and cry to the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet and go to the Lord in prayer. Yes, if you are still living in sin. Confess your sins to God. Confess your sins to God. After you have been saved, then you can come into holiness. If you know God has forgiven you your sins, now you need holiness. You need holiness. On this ground, you need holiness. In your house, you need holiness. In the market, you need holiness. In the school, you need holiness. Wherever you are, you need holiness. Therefore, now, Lay yourself on the altar. Lay yourself on the altar. As you come to the front now, singing that chorus, I surrender all. I surrender all. To the where you want to want sanctification, you want holiness life. Come to the front here.